let's solve quadratics by square roots. On our agenda, we're going to talk about what it means to solve a quadratic, how do we undo something that's squared, and we're going to look at solving these equations both algebraically and graphically. So let's get ready. You're going to need your notes, calculator, and a pencil. And let's just start with what does it mean to solve quadratics? So here we have a quadratic. It's been graphed. We know that the, the name of the shape is a parabola. And what it means is to find the x-intercepts. So in this case, can you see them in the picture? You can see the x-intercepts. They're right there. There are two answers. So when I look a little closer, my answers to this would be 2 and negative 2. Those are my x-intercepts. So I must have solved an equation that gave me those two x-answers. Here I've graphed four parabolas, four different parabolas. They're all color-coded. Let's just take a look and see what you notice. If I look at the graph, I can see my vertex here is at 0, 0. This one is at negative 1, negative 4, negative 9. If I look over here, here's 0, negative 1, negative 4, negative 9. So if we think about these equations, they're technically in both vertex form and standard form. That last number is my y-intercept. It's also my shift down. So this one's going down 1, down 4, down 9. Now let's take a look at the x-intercepts as if we were solving this. So for the red graph, the x-intercept, the answer is 0. For the blue graph, the answer is 1 and negative 1. 1 and negative 1. For the green graph, the answers are 2 and negative 2. And for the purple graph, our answers are 3 and negative 3. So we have two answers. And if we see how are these x-intercepts related to that last number, you might notice that 1, 4, and 9 are all perfect squares. The square roots of them are 1, 2, and 3, respectively. So let's see where that leads us. When we're solving, we might start with an equation that's y equals, but we usually use that to graph. So we want to set equal to 0. So y equals is for graphing. When we have it set to 0, then we can go ahead and solve it. So let's solve this. Um, we're going to try to undo it. So I want to get to this x. I can see right now it's being squared, and then 4 is being subtracted from it. So we want to undo operations. So I want to start with addition or subtraction first. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And I end up with a, a statement that says 4 equals x squared. So if I just think about that for a minute, I'm trying to think about a number that I can plug in here and then square it, and it's going to equal 4. So that must be mean it's the same number multiplied by itself. Well, the answer will be 2. However, is there any other number? That would make this a true statement. Yes. So if I plug in negative 2 in parentheses and square it, I'm also going to get 4. So negative 2 is an answer. So you want to make sure you're finding both answers, not just one answer. That comes from taking the square root. So if we're trying to undo something that's squared, we undo it with a square root. Squaring and square roots are called inverses of each other. They will undo each other. So if I have x squared equals 4, and I want to undo it, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. You have to remember the plus and minus. Plus and minus. That's what's going to get you your two answers. So the square root of 4 is 2, and we want to include the plus or minus. You can write it that way. You can say x equals 2, x equals negative 2. You should be familiar with both notations. When you're solving, you set it to equal to 0. How come? Because we're trying to find the x-intercepts. And when we have x-intercepts, it's the y that is 0. So here I graphed, here I have solved, and I have my answers of 2 and negative 2. Let's try to solve this algebraically. That means we're going to do the algebra. We're going to try to undo it. So I'm subtracting 16, so I'm going to do the opposite and add 16 to both sides. So I have x squared equals 16. I want to undo the square. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, remembering my plus or minus. So square root of 16 is 4, 
and I have that plus or minus. So I have two answers. I could check it algebraically. I could plug it back in. 4 squared minus 16 equals 0. 16 minus 16 equals 0. That checks. I'm going to plug in the negative 4 with parentheses. Remember, negative 4 whole thing squared is still going to come out to be a positive 16. So that one works as well. And there it is on the graph. If we look at it, this negative 16, that's my y-intercept. That's also my shift down. So this whole graph is shifted down 16. And then because it's symmetrical, that's why I have a positive 4 and a negative 4 for answers. Let's try this one. If you notice, we have a negative out in front, and that's okay. I'm going to add the x squared over. I like to keep that positive. So I'm going to add x squared to both sides. And then I have a statement that says 25 equals x squared. I need to undo the square, so I'm going to square root both pieces and include my plus or minus. So this is going to be positive and negative 5 equals x. If I think about the graph of this, well, this one's going to open down because of that, and it's going to be way up high at 25 because that's my y-intercept and it's my shift. So I know my x-intercepts are 5 and negative 5, so my graph would look like that. Let's try to solve graphically. If you notice, this equation is in vertex form. Vertex form. We have the parentheses, which is going to help me figure out my, my transformation along x. Because it's negative 3, I want to plug in 3 to make this whole thing 0. So this is going to move to the right 3 and down 4. So let's do those two movements and then put a point. Remember, we start at the origin 0, 0. So there's not really a point there. Um, I'm just putting it there to show you. So I'm going to go to the right 3, down 4. That's my vertex. Negative, uh, positive 3, negative 4. And it opens up. My a value is 1, so that's my normal step pattern. So I'm going to go up 1 to the right one, up 3 to the right one. Let me just get rid of this point there. And I'm going to go left, back to my vertex. Up 1, left 1, up 3, left 1. There's my parabola. So I've graphed it. Now if I was asked to solve it, I know that those x-intercepts are my answers. So I can say my answer is x equals 1 and x equals 5. Let's try to do this now. Same problem, just solving it algebraically. You can see we've set it equal to 0 so we can solve it. So we have our original. And in the parentheses, we're subtracting 3, squaring it, and then subtracting 4. So I want to start outside. I'm going to add the 4 to both sides. And now I have a, the entire left side is squared, so I want to undo that. I'm going to square root and square root, remembering my plus or minus. So now I have x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2. I need to add the 3 to both. And this right-hand side is going to look a little funny. 3 plus or minus 2. That's two problems you're doing at the same time. So x is 3 plus 2, and x is 3 minus 2. So here we find out that x is 5 and x is 1, which was what exactly we got with our graph. Let's try this one. So we're going to do the algebra. I'm going to undo addition and subtraction first. I'm going to subtract the 5 from both sides. And then I need to undo the fraction 1 fourth. So I could divide by it, but instead I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply everything by 4. On the left-hand side, 4 and 4 goes to 1. So I have x squared. The 4 has to go over to the 9, so I have 36. So I have a statement that says x squared equals 36. I want to undo the square, so I'm going to take the square root, remembering my plus or minus. So here, x equals 6 and negative 6. To recap, when you're solving algebraically, you want to undo addition and subtraction first, then move on to the multiplication and division. Next, take the square root of both sides. Remember your plus and minus so you get two answers. Good job.